Colombo is the capital of Sri Lanka and its political and economic mainstay. Now that the civil war is over, signs of revival are everywhere. Last year, the economy grew by 7%. And that means Sri Lanka's energy needs are growing as well. One big consumer of energy is the tea industry. Sri Lanka is famous for Ceylon tea, and it's one of the country's top exports. The freshly picked leaves have to be processed near the plantation, otherwise they'll spoil. This factory ships 55,000 kilos of tea each day. Now that machines have taken over the job of weighing and chopping the tea leaves, output has soared. For the company, this means higher profits, but also greater energy needs. Most of the people who can afford to have, especially in the private sector, they have gone for automation. Uh, and uh, that's not because of the lab, actually. You know, uh, when food, uh, tea is uh, food, so it's hygienic uh, thing. So we need to have, without handling too much of labor, if you can automate, then you will have a better product. To hold its energy costs in check, the company invested in renewable energy. Now the electricity it needs comes from a nearby hydroelectric plant, which opened last year. It's a small-scale plant, which meets the factory's needs and even contributes 1.4 megawatts to the national grid. The tea factory invested about 2.5 million euros to build it and hopes to recoup that within four years. The Sri Lankan government supports these initiatives by paying a good price for the electricity. We are exporting uh, the energy to the uh, national grid and uh, they are paying a reasonable rate uh, for the, uh, whatever the uh, exported energy from the power plants. Then, uh, so that's why that it was a good opportunity. Sri Lanka has plenty of experience with hydropower and that's due in part to the tea industry. The first tea plantations in Sri Lanka were in the highlands where there's plenty of rain. Tea factories had already turned to waterfalls and rivers for energy a hundred years ago. Today, hydroelectric power meets about 45 percent of Sri Lanka's energy needs. But there's little room on the island to build any more large dams like this one. Still, there's plenty of space for small hydroelectric plants. One such plant is being built here at the edge of the highlands. The investors stop by every few months to keep an eye on the work. A pipe needs to be excavated. It was covered by a landslide during the rainy season. The plant will cost about one million euros, but the investors are convinced it's a good opportunity. Mini hydros, they are of the size where private sector or the entrepreneurs can invest themselves. They can go to a bank, get a loan. Uh, they are not a uh, huge uh, financial cost to them. So it encourages entrepreneurs to build small power plants like this. And also the environmental impact of these small plants are smaller. Uh, firstly, there's no large dam which inundates a big area and perhaps sometimes displaces people. Here in a small hydro, you never have any displacing of people. One day, this small hydroelectric plant will supply about 1,500 households with green electricity. To generate it, part of the river was diverted. The water runs through a pipe and then plunges almost 100 meters. The power of the moving water drives the turbine. But before construction could begin, the investors had to apply for many permits. That meant winning over many different officials to the project. It is a difficult one because, one, we have to balance out the environmental issues, which is uh, we are constructing this inside a forest, so we got to minimize the damage to the forest, minimize the felling of trees, as well as if you take this site, the, uh, the length of the uh, conveyance or the channel and the uh, penstock is fairly big. Uh, in total, we have a 1.5 kilometer length 
channel so the construction complexity the costs are higher the plant will be finished later this year when it's done the plan is to connect the rural community to the main power grid for sri lanka's government bringing electricity to rural regions is an important goal This house was connected to the main grid a year ago. Before that, the household only had electricity between 6 and 10 in the evening. The electricity came from the village's biomass power plant, but now the family has electricity all day. Because we have 24 hours electricity, we can get up earlier and get things done earlier. Because there are lights in the house and on the roads. That has changed our lives. We have more time. And we can relax in the evening. As more of the countryside is connected to the main grid, Sri Lanka's energy needs will continue to increase. That's why plans are underway to build more small hydroelectric plants. Right now, there are about 100 in operation. Soon it's hoped there will be 100 more.